Hello everyone and welcome back to my colonization series in Kerbal Space Program 1.1.2. In this episode I hope to aim for the moon, but looking at mission control here, they are not giving me any contracts for that. They're giving me a lot of part test contracts. Hall Mark 16, Parachute Hall Mark 26, test the Sickle SRB, uh, test the Stack Decoupler at launch site, this is my favorite, test the Launch Stability Enhancer in flight over Kerbin. Right. Uh, haul the swift basic engine into flight above Kerbin. Uh, I don't want to use a jet engine right now. This one I have no idea how to take. It says haul SPX4 sledgehammer air augmented rocket engine into an escape trajectory out of Kerbin. Now that's pretty close. Now that's pretty close. That might be a thing to do that could get us to the moon. I mean, uh, on the way to the moon you're pretty much on an escape trajectory. Though, I don't know if you actually have to escape. I suppose maybe you have to actually leave Kerbin SOI? I don't know. I haven't tried one of those yet. It just says Hall, so theoretically we could use it in order to get there. And it says Air Augmented Rocket Engine, which to me means like a rapier, right? Uh, it is like a rapier of some kind, which is a little bit early, which also makes it a little bit intriguing because why are we getting it so early? But that's probably a mod at work there. Um, flare liquid fuel engine, I, I don't know what that is, but that's suborbital, so I'm not interested. And then, if we wanted to bring a probe back, testing the heat shield would make sense, but it's a small heat shield, not that much protection. Uh, so yeah, well anyway, they don't seem to think we can handle the moon, but I've got other ideas. So let's go to the VAB and take a look at what I've got. Okay, so this here is Muna 1. And uh, you can see the Delta V here. We've got quite a lot of it. All we're going to do is land on the moon and do science. We're going to do science on the way as well, of course. But there's a lot of stuff going on here. Let me close this. First of all, we're taking advantage of the Probodobodyne Don't Stay Putnik, which happens to have the SAS unit up there. And then we've got this RCS thruster block that we happen to pick up from some mod or another. This inline RCS block, I think that's from Venstock Revamp. And that gives us nice thrusters and some monitor propellant. We've got the thermometer here, and you notice I put the two antenna on this antennae on that side, and that's because combined the thermometer and the antennae counterbalance this, which is the magnetometer boom, and they have the same mass. So you can see the two mystery goo on the side there, a nice big fuel tank, and then here what we've got is a rear guard liquid fuel engine uh, tucked in somewhat. It's like that. And that one has a 320 vacuum ISP, and it's got 10 kilonewtons in vacuum. So it's a nice small engine. In fact, it's the smallest engine I've got here, I think. And so it was ideally suited to this purpose for landing on the moon, right? Uh, but we've also got other fiddly bits here. We've got batteries. These are batteries as modified by stock parts revamp. But also these, which are derp concentrated photovoltaic arrays. And so apparently we've got we've got uh, solar panels even though I didn't expect it. they've got batteries attached to them but those batteries only have 20 charge they produce 1.6 uh, per second which is really good so this is a pretty powerful probe altogether it's got the lander legs as well uh, so it's like that that's our probe and then we've got the rest of the rocket which is here I've just got an LV-909 and at the bottom is just an LV-T45 so very straightforward for the rest of the rocket but because the probe is so light, it all works out. The probe itself is only 1.4 tons, and that's with the fuel. Uh, without the fuel, it's only 0.7 tons. So I think that's plenty of Delta V to land on the moon with. And uh, if this works, we can use sort of this body to do other things and put supplies up here, for instance, instead of science. Um, there are, uh, so here we see this uh, radio supply tank, so we could replace the mystery goo units with supplies and send supplies over to emergency supplies over to the moon right away and uh, we can also use the universal storage parts uh, to do other science so if you're worried about well we're not carrying a science junior or something like that there's a quad core adapter and you put these universal storage bays on the side of it this is a general science bay but we've got one for goo containment, one for orbital telescope, which we're not sending this time, and one for science junior, which we're not sending this time. So we could theoretically take two science juniors, a goo container, and an orbital telescope on a second run, 
and uh, we might have to make the probe a little bit taller, but it'll be all right. So that is all part of the plan, that uh, this is a sort of uh, baseline model for uh, Moon Pod, and we can use it to drop supplies off as well. It's got quite a lot of Delta V, so on a bigger rocket, uh, it could carry, or carry a heavier load. In fact, this rear guard liquid fuel engine I've tuned down to 56% uh, of its total thrust, so we could uh, load this up. If we had better lander legs, it'd be pretty easy. And of course, we could replace this core with one of the better cores later on. Um, it's, I, I wouldn't say it's heavy, though. It's pretty light. Uh, but of course, uh, then we would have a reaction wheel or something like that. Right now, we don't have a reaction wheel. We're relying entirely on the inline RCS block for orientation, so that might be a problem. Uh, well, that and of course the gimbling on the engine when we light it. Okay, so that is the plan. Let me uh, time warp to daylight on the outside and then we'll get going. Alrighty, here we are, and I should note that we do still have a 30 part limit and also an 18 ton limit, so this is exactly 30 parts. We couldn't have added anything more to it, and uh, yeah, so keep that in mind. SAS on, throttle is up. And here we go. Uh, not having fins might be a problem. So what I'm going to do is I'm trying to keep it going straight up for a while. I have updated FAR. I've also updated all of the USI colonization mods, which all had updates recently. So we'll see how that goes. Also updated Scatter to uh, 0 0.2, 0 0.4, 0 0.6 or something like that. I don't know, there was a 6 at the end. I don't know if Smart ASS can do any good. Ooh, no! Wow, woo, wow! Woo, whoa! Uh, it was to til totally tilting us even though I didn't want it to tilt us. That was bad. Hmm. Yeah, Smart ASS not, not working very well these days. For me, anyway. I, I mean, if it's working well for you, congratulations! No, this rocket doesn't have anything to help with stability, so except for the engine gimbling. It does gimbal nice though. I think Vens might up the gimbling on this. Maybe. I mean it's definitely holding better than I would expect. Oh, such quietness. Much disappointment. <sighs> Alright, well we can do a thermometer reading from here, surely. If I can reach the thermometer. I don't have action groups unlocked yet. Okay, we'll just transmit that. Lock magnetometer data. Not suitable for use in atmospheric flight. Okay, fair enough. Well, even though I had the steep ascent, I think it's going alright. Okay, that will do. Let's extend these little solar panels. Okay, while we are recharging, let's get that magnetometer boom. Alright, magnetometer boom. Look at that thing. Alright, well it looks like we get 100% for transmitting, so let's transmit. And how about the temperature? We get 50% for that, but let's transmit it anyway. Alright, we just have to wait until the moon's over the horizon. And then we'll go. Wish we had a contract for this, though. Okay, we go to the moon. Alright, set. Unfortunately, that stage will be hanging out in orbit for a while. Ignition. Ooh. This guy gimbals a lot. Well, just touching. Alright, let's go over there and see what happens. Gotta unlock all that stuff. But not right now. Diminishing electric charge. Ah, I now know how to fix this thanks to somebody in my Twitch stream. Ocean settings, rebuild ocean. And that goes away. Okay, very good. Uh, but the electric charge situation. So here we need some RCS help. 
but we'll want to reserve most of the RCS for landing. Oh, it's not because of me. It's because it's not because of our orientation. It's because of the eclipse. Ah. Well, nothing's gonna solve that. Ah, we got it back. All right, the eclipse is over. Yep, nope. we are on a crash course. Let's not do that. Nice polar sort of orbit, though. Okay, so now I will enable RCS. I will go away from the moon. Oh, we should do high over the moon science right now, huh? So, thermometer. Transmit. Magnetometer. And I'll save one goo container for orbit and one goo container for the surface for now. Okay. Okay, there we go. Now, I want to make sure that we land on the sunlit side, but uh, we're pretty close to the termina Terminator, so... Um, yeah, I guess maybe we could hit this crater over here? Uh, let's see. Depends on how the moon proceeds. Okay, that looks like a fine approach. Let's head over to that crater. Alright, RCS on again. This time I'm gonna leave it on because now we're doing the critical landing run and I'm not going to want to lose the ability to control the vessel. Ooh, interesting pop out on the landing gear. Well, there's nothing glitchy about them. So, let me do one mystery goo right now. Uh, well, I'll try and, well, we could send a Kerbal to retrieve it, but no, let's just transmit for now. Okay, transmitting magnetometer scan. That's not biome dependent. And also the thermometer. This is purple goo. That's not, that's not, uh, canon, is it? I mean, isn't it supposed to be green goo? I mean, come on. Purple goo? I think I want to land in this area here, right between those two craters, not in the crater. Should be alright. That's some rough terrain over there. Alright, here we go, final descent. Alright. Should be getting close to the ground by now. Okay. RCS off. Goo container observed. And Moon's Far Side Crater. Transmit. Yep. Magnetometer boom. Let's log that. 20 signs for that. Transmit. Temperature. Okay, transmit. And there we go. We have achieved our first lunar probe landing. That's a cute little fella too. Okay. I think this was a success. We have plenty of Delta V left, so that shows that we can carry something a bit heavier to the surface. Let's go back to the VAB. Well, I said VAB, but I meant Mission Control. So here in Mission Control, we see that we did get some funds from that because I guess we got some world's first uh, items. But we also picked up this Flyby Minimus contract. Apparently, uh, now that we've done the moon, they've skipped right over that and decided to give us Minmus. But that's fine. We'll f not only fly by Minmus, I intend on landing a probe on Minmus and getting science. Uh, if they're not going to give us contracts for that, that's fine by me. We are proceeding ahead. I am not, I'm not patient about these contracts. Now, in the R&D building, we've got 159 science available. And we know that the stuff we want is over here somewhere. Colonization parts are here. 
So I'm not going to waste any time. I also want the fire ant and the ant and those sorts of things. So actually I'm going to research... Yeah, this seems to require both this and this. So I'm going to research this one first. Okay, and we'll have to wait on that, but we can probably unlock one of these. We've already got an RCS system. What we don't have is the small inline reaction wheel. That would be sort of convenient. I could replace the RCS system that we have on the probe with the reaction wheel and that'd be lighter. That is probably the idea. Another thing we don't have that we probably want is fairings. So it's between fairings and the reaction wheel. And on that balance, I'll take the reaction wheel. Yep. So I don't intend to mess around too much with the winning formula here. Uh, I've just replaced the RCS block with a reaction wheel. And for Minmus, I've replaced the rear guard engine with the ant engine. Because with the rear guard, we were toning it down to 56%, uh, so its max thrust was 5.6 kilonewtons. Uh, I think the ant engine's 2 kilonewtons will be more than enough for Minmus. That gives us actually more delta V, though we'll have to be patient about it. It's a 17 minute burn, but that's alright. Uh, you don't have to worry about that. I'll cut out all the boring bits, and otherwise the rocket is the same. Uh, 29 parts? Did I miss something here? Because I thought we were at 30 parts. Mm, I don't think so. Okay, so there we are. Okay, it's sort of an evening launch here. It's sort of scenic though, so I'll take it. Still no fins. Uh, an extra reaction wheel though, which is nice. But we'll go straight up for most of the time. Once again, not too sure about Smart ESS. I'll leave it be for now. Okay, here we go. Now, I mean, this is tricky because of the inclination, but I'll figure that out. I hope. We could unlock some of the building stuff. We've got like 500,000 funds, so we've got some room to work with if I need maneuver nodes and such. Maybe I should just do that. Let's not. Let's not waste any time. Oh, that's pretty nice. The way the mountains are sort of... Oh, oh boy, I think uh, I better watch myself here. Yeah, I'm enjoying the scenery, but not paying attention to that all-important prograde vector. Ah, uh, god rays as well. Work in progress for Scatterer, but looking good. Okay, set. And ignition of the LV-909. Alright, uh, so, like I said, I don't think I'm gonna derp around and try and hit Minmus by eyeballing it. Instead, I'm going to unlock the relevant buildings. Let me go back to the Space Center. Okay, so, tracking station, orbits visible in map, patch conics visible. Yes, I want patch conics visible. And mission control, flight planning available. Yes. And before we do anything else, we might as well check if they have anything else for us to do. Uh, not really. It is all Kerbin stuff. Okay, let's go back to our mission underway. Alright, so I've plotted the transit to Minmus, and here we are lining up. And let's have Smart ASS hold the node. Here in space, Smart ASS is fine, I think. But uh, anyway, here we go. Uh, yep, let's go. The LB-909 has more than enough juice to get us on Trans Minmus Injection. And it's a good approach to Minmus here. We're going to have a periapsis about 74 kilometers, if we do it right. Now once I get this to Minmus, we can do a few hops, obviously. The, the lander has quite a bit of fuel in it. And so we'll at least be able to do the magnetometer and thermometer scans at a number of locations. After that, I want to try and send some supplies over to the moon. Now, we haven't done a resource scan of the moon, so we don't know where the resources are for our future base. But this will be sort of a temporary place to do some basic testing of the whole colonization thing. It'll sort of be like the emergency hab that I had before. 
but different. It will not be quite the same. It will definitely not have Inferno Robotics parts, which might get a little bit glitchy. No, we will want the parts to be sort of anti-glitchy. Unlikely to cause any glitches. Okay, well that's good enough. Alright, let's go over to Minmus. We've got our solar panels out. Okay, there we go. So panels are out. And we've already done a scan around here. Let's just go over there. Let's get that flyby contract done. Then we pr should probably go back to mission control. Okay, flyby contract is done. Flyby Minmus, very good. Uh, we get the information about the stage recoveries not happening. Oh, these are the world's first milestones that we've gotten. First flyby of Minmus as well. And uh, another stage destroyed, but it doesn't seem to tell me when uh, about the stage I tried to recover. It's only when I don't try to recover the stages that's definitely telling me that they're destroyed. But anyway, we'll have to do a uh, stage recovery attempt some other time. I don't plan to do that in this episode. This time we're just gonna be getting quick supply missions out. We gotta see how to make supply missions with the new colonization life support mod. Okay, so here in Mission Control wants us to test a fire ant at the launch site. That's the radial ant. Conduct orbital survey of... well, the survey requires some material studies. We could do that later, but not right now. There's a position of satellite there, and then science data from space around the moon. I guess I can pick that one up pretty quickly. I mean, uh, that, that can be done for sure. This, well, it says uh, at least two of the following experiments. The next mission, maybe we could do it. Yeah, it's just high over Minmus, high over Minmus. It seems to want two different materials studies. I don't know if they're in a specific location or anything. I mean, this is material study data from high orbit above Minmus, and this is also material study data from how we're over Minmus, so does that mean just one will take care of both of them? I don't know. I, I guess we'll pick it up. Okay, well, let's try and do the mystery goo one this time. We could probably do that. I was originally gonna save one of the mystery goos, uh, both of the mystery goos for surface locations, but this will give us some extra science, so that's good. Uh, and science data from space around Kerbin, I suppose we should pick up. We've got a uh, Capacity of seven contracts, so we might as well. Okay, let's get back to Minmus. All right, so let us see. Science data. Oh, okay. Orbital survey of Minmus. Let me see. Observe mystery goo. All right, we're in uh, high over Minmus, high orbit above Minmus. I don't know. I suppose that's the same thing, right? I hope so. Let's transmit it says return or transmit. Okay, that's fulfilled. Very good. Alright, so we'll just need the material studies. Or maybe just one, depending on how it works. And orbit. Now the LB-909, I don't know if it's going to get into orbit or not. No, it doesn't look like it. So it's got to be on escape. Off it goes. And now the ant engine. We could take off again and head to the moon if we wanted to, and land on the moon, too. That would not be a problem. I mean, 2647, we could ho head over to Duna. But let's not get ahead of ourselves. Where should we go? Well, let's go around and maybe hit this flat here. I don't know if it'll have rotated away by the time we get there, though. Oh, we should get, uh, this still probably high over Minmus. We'll get the temperature scan and the magnetometer scan. There you go. Let me pull our orbit in so that we can make a landing. Woo. Let's retract that magnet. Well, we'll leave it out. It doesn't seem to mess up our balance. Okay, and this should be near Minmus. Yes, transmit. Transmit. 
Okay, I better have enough time to slow down here. This is the ant engine. It's not like I have some really powerful engine to work with. But it says suicide burn countdown 1 minute 45 seconds, so I'm probably still way early. But we're over the right place, so anywhere over here we do will do us fine. We'll be fine. Okay, I might have waited a touch late to do this burn here. Hey, this will be a somewhat dramatic suicide burn. Eh, yeah, not really. Okay, come on. Touchdown. Alright, probe on Minmus. Observe Mystery Goo. Transmit data. Yep. Log temperature. Transmit that. Log mag magnetometer data. And we will transmit that. Alright, all done here. But let's do some hopping. We are currently here. That's a nice flat place there. Let me try and get over to that one. So that seemed to be northeast. I really don't need the magnetometer sticking. Well, it's just a bother to retract it anyway. That really is a flat top there. Wonder what kind of uh, event could cause that. Looks like I've got sort of an edgy sort of landing here. Alright, here we are. Let's get the magnetometer data. Transmit. Thermometer data. Transmit, and that's it. Now, I don't think I'm going to do any more hopping right now, though we'll, we'll just leave it here and we'll have it ready to do some more hopping when we need more science. But uh, I want to go back to the VAB and get a supply mission underway, and maybe we'll pick up another contract. We'll see. So, I'm going to try a supply mission. We've got quite a lot of fun. So, we've got 613,000, and one of these rockets only costs 12,000. So, but this is not going to be a standard moon mission. We'll, we'll put some science on, but I really want to see about the supplies first. So let's say we rearrange all this. I'm going to take the thermometers off and everything. And we've got to focus on supplies. In order to do that, we need to figure out how much supplies would be good for, let's say, a few Kerbals. And right now, there's no supplies in the command pod. Which is funny, and which also confused me, because it seems like it should have some supplies built in, right? But there's no supplies in the command pod, and and yeah, apparently a Kerbal can live in there for 30 days, it says in here, which is pretty impressive. But uh, yeah, let's see if we go ahead and slap some supplies on, how that changes things. So uh, here, I'm just going to add and eight set of these supply canisters. Okay, so that looks like it's four days of supplies. So each of these canisters for one Kerbal is half a day of supplies. Now these are Kerbal days, so uh, f uh, six hour days. So for each day they need about 20 supplies, let's say. I mean it's actually five days almost. Now that means that these little cans don't carry much at least for the, the these supply cans water and oxygen if I was using TAC life support the water and oxygen yeah it would probably last for quite a bit longer that would be nice but anyway uh, life support mini pack though oh, that's a bigger pack ooh well we could send these and you know an eight set of these mini packs would last 50 days for one oh, 49 days for one Kerbal there's also mulch and fertilizer if we want to send that. Okay, well, let me rebuild this system and we'll send these mini packs. I think the logistics system that USI has in it means that we don't have to use KAS to connect things together, but we'll have to test that out. But let me see how much, by way of supplies, I can pack into this sort of standard delivery system and I'll get back to you. 
Okay, well, I found the other supply bin, which is this life support tank here, 1.25 meters, and has 500 supplies. I don't know which is better. Uh, if I put eight of these, it's actually 800 supplies. And this is, uh, what we've got here is only 500 supplies. Um, I'll think about that in a sec, but I encountered another problem. I was going to use the USI... Uh, science storage things, you know, this Science Junior, this orbital telescope, and this goo container. And it looks very nice and all, and it can fit tight around the thing instead of the bulky Science Junior that we normally have, you know, this. This is a much better improvement. The problem is they're really, really expensive. This uh, Science Junior is 6,500, this orbital telescope is 7,000, and this goo container is 1,400. Compared to that to this goo container, 800, but this Science Junior is only 880, so that's a huge markup, like eight times. The orbital telescope, admittedly, is 4,000, uh, so 7,000 isn't that big a deal. Especially, well, it is heavier though, so that's not nice. So this whole uh, universal storage way of getting science out, not the best way to go. I, I don't like that. I mean, that alone costs like almost twice the cost of the rocket, so... Let's not do that, and maybe I'll add some more supplies. So we'll have around 1,000 supplies. Hmm, but that's not enough Delta V to land on the moon. If I could get to the moon, we could get into lunar orbit, but not land there. Maybe... Now, I wish there was a way of seeing... Well, it still reads one crew, I guess. I don't know where it reads one crew, but... I guess it's set to assume that there's one crew. That's good. Cause, so now I know that this tank has enough for one Kerbal for 30 days. That's handy. Okay, so this will be just a emergency supply test sort of thing. And we'll see how that goes. Let's land this on the moon. We'll call this Moon 2. And it'll be sort of the start of our very first... We'll, we'll try and land a... When we do a Kerbal and have a Kerbal plant a flag, we will probably land that Kerbal close to this. Just so that the Kerbal has some spare supplies to use while he's over there. We'll see how that goes, whether we have to connect it with KES or whether the Kerbal can access these supplies without any fuss. Uh, we will examine that when we first land a Kerbal on the moon. But let's get this over there first. Okay, I time warped on the launch pad here. So we lost some electric charge because it's nighttime also. But here we go. Now the thing is, we haven't actually brought a probe back from the moon. So we will be sending a Kerbal over there and bringing the Kerbal back without having tested that whole thing. And, you know, how deadly re-entry and all that might work out far. And all that business, but hopefully it'll be alright. So that's what I'm planning to do in the next episode. We will send a Kerbal to the moon and see how the supplies work, and then bring that Kerbal back. Unfortunately, we don't seem to be getting any contracts for this. Um, I might have to install some additional contract packs, maybe there's stuff like that, but you know, the contract packs I've seen, I've seen the, like the remote tech contract pack, but I don't have remote tech in here. The tourism pack, but I hate tourism. Um, I don't know uh, what contract packs might be good for this, for colonization. Is there like a, con a colonization contract pack? Does colonization come with contracts itself? I don't know. Again, we're going a little bit steeply initially because we don't have fins to stabilize or anything like that. Apologies for the trajectory, but actually it works out pretty well. So again, no science with this. We're just lining some supplies down. And I'm sure we will have much more efficient supply drops later on and supply systems but you know uh, 50 days for a Kerbal on a rocket that costs 12,000 funds is not bad but we should make it reusable and everything if stage recovery will agree with that otherwise I'll have to manually land it down I should try out FMRS with this maybe FMRS works better these days with 64 bit and all uh, and that would be nice so I'll be able to manually land it I'll, I should remember to try that out next time. I think FMRS is updated for 1.1 now. 
I think maybe we can burn uh, for the moon directly without, uh, I mean, as part of our orbital burn. Now, if this is how many supplies we can deliver to the moon, uh, surely this system can deliver much more to Minmus. So there's that. And if we build reusability in, maybe that'll help. Uh, I expect that, I mean, that'll help the cost, though uh, we'll have to see about the payload. Alright, there's the moon, we are in orbit, and we continue. Alright, separation, and ignition. I suppose the question is, where do we want to land at, and set up our first moon base at? Again, since we don't have any sort of resource analysis, we can't choose based on that. Incidentally, we have 220 science, so we can definitely do some unlocking once we get back. We'll also have to upgrade the research center in order to unlock technologies that require more than 100, I think. Alright, here we go. Wow, 20 kilometers? Alright, I'll take that. Let's head over there and make some sort of landing. Could land in this crater here. Seems pretty straightforward. Okay, burning for lunar orbit with our supplies. Okay, that's a good orbit, 42 by 38. Let's land here. Yeah, I think we'll land in this crater. I wonder if this is the same crater that I built the base in in the original colonization series. That would be ironic. Um, this time, let's not build it in a crater within the crater. I like that plane there. Better burn time seems to unflatteringly call it an impact. Don't quite like that. Okay, this final descent burn here. Not much fuel left, so this was certainly the right amount of stuff to bring. Okay, there we go. So, our goal will be to land a Kerbal somewhere around here. So that the Kerbal can access the supplies. And we will also send other things here. Maybe there are resources here, maybe not. We haven't unlocked that technology. In fact, let's go to the resource cent uh, research center and see where we unlock that technology. It might have changed because we've got all these mods in. Seismic hammer. I have no idea what kind of science that is. Soil moisture. Oh, here we go. Well, I mean, this can scan for water. I don't know what we use water for since we don't have tack life support, but it can scan for water. Uh, we'll have to see uh, whether we can break water down into liquid fuel and oxidizer. I suppose what we really need is carbonite to start off with. Yes, we still have carbonite. Um, or, or. Carbonite or ore. Well, here we have the ore converter. So we unlock the ore converter way out in advanced science tech. But we don't actually need to exploit ore to figure out where to go to get it. So that that gives us water. This this one gives us ore, so we can do it starting here. Uh, this one will allow us to scan for minerals. We need to be able to manufacture supplies, huh? I don't actually know how to manufacture supplies. I, get, I mean, we have to be able to manufacture supplies, right? Otherwise, it won't, I mean, if we have to keep sending supplies, it won't work. But I, I haven't seen what we use to manufacture supplies. So, we should proceed through here. This requires advanced exploration, which is this one, and then precision engineering. So, and this requires space exploration, and this requires this and that. So here, we do get this additional science module. We get additional containers for the KK stuff. K and K. And the EL survey station, which I never used in the other series. 
Maybe I should put that glass board just so I can use water and oxygen for heaven's sakes. It would be nice to be able to use those. Unless uh, there is a use of it in colonization that I don't understand just yet. Okay, so I'm going to unlock electrics. Going to unlock space exploration. And that leaves me with 45 so I can get the fairings. Alright, so there we are. And in the next episode, I hope to bring a Kerbal to that location on the moon. And we'll take it from there. Alright, so thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.